Hey what's up guys and welcome back to another Real Madrid preview This is the preview to Real Madrid versus Alaves at the Bernabeu For what is the last home game in La Liga at least until Villarreal I wanna say um, which is just before the international break so three more games to go before the international break hits and this is a must win game and after that Espanol result this result this game will be a big big extra boost to go out there and to push and to try to get that win and I think that it will be done again it's not gonna be easy uh, I know Real Madrid beat Espanyol 4-1 but the first 45 minutes of that game was utterly horrendous if you're being honest a couple of opportunities here and there but it wasn't really a dominant first half from Real Madrid and Alaves managed um, and Espanyol sorry managed to hang on so Alaves if they get it right if they play their cards right and they defend well and they manage to hit on the break on some occasions you could see this side potentially not conceding for 45 minutes again and I said this in the reveal for Real Madrid against Espanyol of the 18 goals that Real Madrid have scored in all competitions this season since the UEFA Super Cup final against Atalanta 17 of the 18 have been scored in the second half only one goal which was Rodrigo's goal against Mallorca has been scored in the first 45 minutes so I think that will change I think that eventually you're gonna score in the first half you're not going to forever only score in the second but the ratio to that I mean 18 goals 17 second half goals I mean what is that that's really just ridiculous isn't it so look I believe that Real Madrid will win it's not arrogance but it's really just how it is and how it's gonna be probably and how it should be I think if Real Madrid don't win this game then yeah there isn't a lot to say so I think this game will be pretty straightforward Alaves are currently doing pretty well they are sixth in the table they have gotten three wins one draw and two losses in their opening six which is pretty decent you know for a site like Alaves they should probably realistically being in that 14-15 zone they are exceeding of course it's only six games in but they're doing well and you know looking at their form they have beaten Sevilla at home but away wise they lost away to Espanyol funnily enough I mean um, how that works um, and in terms of their other games they beat Atletico Madrid at home but obviously that is um, wait that was last season okay um, for some reason Google has just scrolled all the way to last season my bad um, they beat Real Sociedad away from home um, back in August and they lost away to Celta Vigo as well so in terms of away they have lost two and won one away it's not great is it you know they've lost two games this season and both have been away from home so their away form has been um, really really poor um, with two defeats on the road and one win so they're you know 33% really isn't it um, win percentage away from home 
which isn't that great. So I think Real Madrid have to capitalize on this opportunity. Back-to-back -back home games against teams that will probably end up mid-table. They won't get relegated, I don't think. I think there are a lot of teams that are a lot worse in terms of the squad. So I think that certainly this will be a straightforward win. Um, maybe not as straightforward as we expect, but I think when it comes to the full 90, I think it will be you know, a comfortable win after 90. But I think the first 45 minutes, again, it's going to be similar to what we saw um, against Espanyol. You know, it is going to be a team that will play relentlessly defensively, that will defend as hard as they can, and it's down to Alaves as to how defensive brilliant they are. Some decent players they've got, um, they have got Luca Romero. Um, we played against him, didn't we? Um, he was at Almeria last season, wasn't he? They've got Carlos Vicente, Tony Martinez from Porto, Juan Hodan, ex Sevilla, um, Antonio Blanco, ex Real Madrid, um, Kike Garcia. They've got um, actually not a lot. Carlos Martin. They've got a lot of forwards as well. They've got Villa Ribra, Villa Library. Um, sorry, ex Athletic Club. They've got Stoichkov. Um, Another attacker, they've got seven attackers, hold eight. They've got Konechi as well, eight attackers. They've got Guevara in the midfield. They've got Novo, who is an attacker, nine attackers. Holy crap! And Rebach and Lavitigi. They've got ten attackers, I think, which is just incredible. Um, Defensively, they're not looking great. Um, they've got Manu Sanchez, Tenaglia, um, Adrian Pica, Ortiz, sorry. So look, they're barely making a defensive side. I mean, they probably have about four to five defensive players, um, maybe four to five midfield players. They've got ten attacking players for some reason. I'm sure a couple of those players are not going to get involved or their academy young players but to have at least what five or six attacking players um, who are all strikers by the way they're basically all strikers it's incredible so we'll see how that goes um, I'm sure they'll find a way to form a very decent starting 11 that's for sure but look I think it's got to be it's got to be a win for Real Madrid now look make this quick it might be a shorter preview than usual but my starting 11 I have taken a bit of rotation into consideration with Atletico Madrid coming up in the weekend but not too much I don't think you need to do a whole lot goalkeeper I have brought Lunin in now is this the time I would say it's a good time I think Courtois made a mistake against Espanyol. He was good. Let's not, you know, discredit him. He still made a couple of big saves, but the momentum that he carried from Stuttgart was what it mattered. He did. I think it's only fair you give Lunin a game. I think if you don't give Lunin a game now, he's not going to start against Atletico. He's not going to start against Lille, and I doubt he will start against Villarreal. So that's all the way until the next international break that Lunin will have a chance I think this is a great game it's at home you know it's in between a couple of big games start Lunin and you could well see that change I think Ancelotti has made a couple of big rotations this season that I have not expected so I think this could well be one of those the defense I think Mendy comes back in for Frank Garcia um, and Mandy is set to sign a new contract. I think he's already signed it. I think you'll probably keep Tromini at centre back and you bring Militao in for Rudiger. And I think Lucas Vasquez starts at right back to 
give Carvajal a rest. Could Fran Garcia start? He could, very highly likely as well. But I've got Mendy. Midfield, Modric I think will get dropped. And if you drop Modric, you don't really have a lot of options. Kamavinga is still out. Dani Sabal is out. Brahim Diaz out. So you're left with Arda Gula, Bellingham and Fede Valverde as realistically three of your midfield options. Um, I think that it is unlikely to see Modric start again ahead of you know Arda Gula. I think Bellingham will start for sure. And the front line, I've not changed anything. Although I was tempted to drop Rodrigo for Endrick and put Mbappe on the right. But I don't think Mbappe will go on the right. And I don't think Endrick will start. Although he could. You could well see Mbappe benched. You could see Mbappe benched. I'm just saying, I think the fact that Vinicius Jr. was benched in the last game and he came on. Maybe Vinny is benched again. Who knows? But certainly, it would be nice to see Endrick start a game for sure in the attack. So that will be my starting 11. Score predictions. 3-1 Real Madrid, I think. They are a good side, they have played well, but I think away from home against Real Madrid, it will be a tough challenge for anyone, let alone Alaves. So, yeah, but let me know what thoughts are down below. Hope you guys have enjoyed today's preview. Hit the thumbs did, subscribe to the channel already, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.